welcome back to Bedtime Stories with Fee. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, I have got a wonderful book to share with you today. Um, Muddy Little Boots has sent me two of their books and they are absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to read this one today. There's no deer around here. And then I have another one to read. So look out for that one in the next few weeks as well. But they are just absolutely beautiful. So once you've listened to the story, um, I will put a link in the description below if you would like to go and get your own copy. Because although you can listen to me reading it, it's so nice to have your own copy, isn't it? And then you can listen to me read it while you have it, because then you can see the pictures properly as well. And the pictures in this book are just absolutely beautiful. So please think about buying your own copy. Let's see what happens in today's story. It was the weekend and Jacob was staying with Granny, but they were stuck indoors. Earlier in the year, Granny had suggested they grow their own plants. Jacob loved the idea. He wanted to grow a pumpkin the size of his head and the biggest, brightest sunflower in the street. <gasps> Have you ever grown any of your own fruit or vegetables or plants or flowers, anything? Amazing! Could you imagine having a pumpkin as big as your head? That would be a big one, wouldn't it? Or oh, the tallest sunflower ever. Finally, the sun came out from behind the clouds. Jacob rushed downstairs and ran out into the garden to check on their plants. He was happy to see that the sunflower had grown. But what had happened to the vegetable patch? Everything had been eaten. <gasps> oh no! All the things that they'd been growing in their vegetable patch was gone. Who could have eaten it? Hmm. Granny came outside to see what was wrong. She pointed to the gate, looking confused. Jacob, did you leave the gate open? How many times have I told you to shut the gate so Archie Dog can't escape? Sorry, Granny, Jacob replied. Jacob picked up a lettuce leaf that had been left on the lawn. The leaf had been nibbled. What do you think came in last night? Jacob asked. A cow? Some sheep? Or maybe a deer? Granny was quick to reply. A deer? Oh no, dear. There's no deer around here. Wonder what it could be? Maybe a rabbit? Mm, a fox? I'm not sure a fox eats lettuce though. Shall we see if we can find some more clues? And maybe next time you can join in with there's no deer around here. Every Sunday, Jacob and Granny took Archie Dog for a walk. Jacob would skip along the path and splash in the muddy puddles. Jacob and Archie Dog were the best of friends. Give me a thumbs up if you like jumping up and down in muddy puddles. Splish, splash, splash, splish, splash, splash, splish, splash, splash. Looking down at the squelchy mud, Jacob could see his footprints and Archie Dog's paw prints. But there were other prints too. What makes marks like this? Jacob wondered. A tiny lady with pointy shoes. So we've got Jacob's footprints, we've got the doggy's footprints and we've got another footprint. And he thinks it might be a lady with very pointy shoes. Don't be silly, Granny replied, climbing over the stile in her old wellies. Tiny ladies would never walk in the mud in their best pointy shoes. Maybe a deer, wondered Jacob. Granny was quick to reply. A deer? Oh no, dear. There are no deer around here. When they reached the park, they let Archie Dog off the lead. He ran round and round and round and round and round, chasing his ball and barking with joy. Suddenly, Archie Dog dropped his ball and set off across the field towards the fence. No matter how loudly Jacob and Granny shouted, he kept on running. Hmm, I wonder what he spotted. Finally, Granny caught up with him and put his lead back on, but Archie Dog kept on sniffing. What can he smell? A cat? A fox? Or maybe a deer? asked Jacob. Granny was quick to reply. A deer? Oh no, dear. There's no deer around here. 
She's sure there's no deer, but what do you think? You think there might be some deer? There's been lots of clues to send us that way, hasn't there? The park was normally full of activity, but today it was quiet. Instead of the usual games and children playing, there was only the noise of the birds tweeting and chattering as they swooped to catch flies. Can you be a bird? Tweet, 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 tweet. Jacob looked up and spotted a blackbird on the fence. The bird flapped its wings and flew away. But Jacob noticed he'd left something behind. Some fur or something on the fence. Jacob reached up and carefully picked a clump of fur off the fence. He looked at it closely. What could be missing this, he wondered. Hmm. Could it be a deer, he asked. Granny was quick to reply. A deer? Oh no, dear. There's no deer around here. Suddenly, Archie Dog stuck his head into the bushes and wouldn't come out. Archie, no, shouted Granny. It was clear he was eating something he shouldn't. Granny pulled him out of the bushes and Jacob expected him to be chewing a mouldy old sandwich or an apple. After all, they were Archie Dog's favourites. Hmm, what could he have found in the bush? Shall we have a look? Jacob saw what looked like melted chocolate raisins. Granny insisted that he mustn't try and eat one. Do you know what these little balls of brown are? Poo! <laughs> I think they found some poo. And that's why Granny's saying, don't try one. Is it poo, Granny? Jacob asked. Some kind of sticky rabbit poo? Or is it deer? Had he been to the loo, he chuckled. Granny was quick to reply. A deer? Oh no, dear. There are no deer around here. We found lots of clues so far, but Granny is still sure it's not a deer. On the edge of the woods, there was Jacob's tree. He had planted it with his school friends as part of a nature project. Jacob loved to see how his tree had grown. It was still taller than him, but he was catching up fast. <gasps> He's grown that tree. That's cool, isn't it? Can you be a tree? Start off really small, and then we're going to grow. Woo! <laughs> With lots and lots of branches. But the tree looked sad. The bark on one side had been damaged, and the ground had been churned up. What could have done this? Could it be a deer? Jacob asked. Granny was weary and quick to reply. A deer? Oh no, dear. There are no deer around here. That evening, back at the house, Jacob emptied his pocket and studied the fur closely under his bedside light. He couldn't stop thinking about the clues he'd seen that day. A leaf that was nibbled, the footprints in the mud, the sniffing from the dog, the fur on the fence, the poo, pooey, and the tree where the bark had been pulled off. Could it really be a deer so close to here? Hmm. Have you ever had a deer near your house? Where I used to live, there were loads of deers and we would see them all the time in the little forest over the road. So it could be a deer, shall we see? Before turning off his light, Jacob jumped out of bed and peered out the window for one last look at the garden. Oh no, he gasped, the gate's open again. Before he had time to tell Granny, a pair of ears appeared over the fence, casting a strange shadow in the moonlight. What could it be? <gasps> so someone has left the gate open again and he'd get into trouble if he leaves it open again, won't he? But before he can close it, there are a pair of little ears poking up. I knew it! I knew it! A deer! A deer! So there really are deer around here. 
The mummy deer and the baby strolled in through the open gate and began to nibble on the few remaining leaves. Jacob smiled with delight and with lettuce leaf in her mouth, Jacob could have sworn the deer smiled back. Amazing! Jacob couldn't believe his luck. Leaving the deer to enjoy their snack, he climbed back into bed and fell fast asleep. So what a busy day of trying to find out who had destroyed their vegetable patch. And right at the end, he found out. Amazing. So there really was a deer around here. Granny was wrong. I hope you've enjoyed that story. It's a lovely one, isn't it? And maybe if you get yourself a copy, you'll be able to see all the clues that he found up close and see the little ears over the fence. Thank you very much for listening today. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you would like to get yourself a copy, the link is in the description below. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye.